the lotto Her blood make the snow fall Colorado She the prototype addicted to the pipe swallow She everybody type looking like mulatto Grew up out that Yalda era Cubana, lustin' like Guantanamera She gone to November, can't move on, can't forget a Good girl gone bad like Wanda Remember out in L.A., she left her nigga out in the bay Another actress in the capital where it never rains Love her like a drug spread, pleasure and pain And CIA made treasure for the U.S. of A Coca, ain't a loca, man Been focused on focus, no chocha Chase it, Oakland, raise me, local, famous Get hip, don't wanna say, cause it's so contagious She's a Malie, she thought I knew Every time I see him, acting like he the one in charge and shit. In Compton, he is the one. You lose. Every time you bite with that nigga, and I'm the one that pays for it. And you gonna get off his corners? You gonna leave his people be? Or you the one that's gonna find yourself a new plug? You don't mean that shit? The fuck I don't. I built this shit. Me. Brick by brick. And I'll be damned if I let you tear it down just cause you like the way I'm not gonna get it Tennessee, Tennessee, one, two, let's go. Hey, it's your boy Renz Jr. You know what I'm saying? We back online. Back at it again this week. Podcast, episode 13. Renz 510 Radio, East Bay Kings Podcast. You see the background, I'm watching the Warriors game right now. They getting their ass whipped, but, you know, I think we could, uh, well, I don't know. I mean, shit, we'll get into it later, man. It seemed like they was coasting. They've been coasting, trying to wait till the playoffs to, uh, you know, turn it on and, and, and just hit that switch. But I don't know about that right now. It's not looking too good. It's not looking too good. Uh, yeah, just dropped that new snowfall. Hope y'all like that. Single up uh, out now for sale on all digital retailers. Check it out on Spotify, Apple Music, uh, you know what I mean? YouTube, everywhere. I know you hear that Mac Dre in the background. That's uh, Live 365. We tuned in, tapped in right now. That's the radio station. Rens 5 and 0 Radio. Uh, we getting into it. Uh, yeah, we back at it. So yeah, let me tell you why I dropped this song, man. Uh, I mean, it just seems that the entertainment business, the entertainment industry has been glorifying and taking from a situation, uh, you know, being drugs, cocaine, the 80s, uh, to continue to come out with movies, uh, TV shows, documentaries, that contain uh, references and, and you know information from that time period, and uh, you know they they've been feeding that to us in movies. Like I said, from since I was growing up, you had Colors, you had uh, Boys in the Hood, you had Scarface, you had uh, you know Clockers, Paid in Full, you know. And if you listen to the lyrics, you see I speak on that. But you tend to wonder when you get older and more mature, um, you know, why is that? Why do they keep um, portraying those images of black men as drug dealers, dope dealers, uh, you know, on these movies? It's a real deal. It's a real thing that, yeah, it did happen. It's still happening. But, you know, what I'm saying is like it's a, it's a stereotype that's being uh, continually pushed on the public. Uh, you know what I'm saying? All races can see it, and that's what they think when you walk into a when you walk into a public place or when you 
uh, you know what I'm saying, just out there, out and about in public. That's what they, that's what they, uh, you know, that's what they think. Nine times out of 10, you know, that, that, you know, you look like that person that they saw on TV, on these shows. Uh, and it's glorified, it gets put into the kids' mind, youth mind, over and over again, repetitiously, you know, and figure, you know, that's one of the routes um, that you can go, and it's susceptible, you know. Uh, growing up in that environment, you know what I'm saying, that's the real deal, like, you do face those obstacles and those options of, you know, I'm either gonna go to school, play ball, or I'm gonna be a dope dealer, but yet, uh, they don't show you the negative consequences. They don't uh, portray us in a way that we can be better than that. You know, on a lot of these shows, BMF, uh, like I said, uh, Belly, all these shows, man. Like I grew up somewhere, you know, looking up to some of them shows with no father figure. You know what I mean? And uh, now I'm older. I got kids. You know, I'm trying to educate them and give them my perspective on what's really going on and how it went down. And, uh, you know, I dropped this song. It was loosely inspired by the show. Uh, it's Cali. Uh, this show, I like the show, man. I, I ain't going to front. I watch all that shit. I watch the shows. I can relate to the shows. But we got to grow and develop and get better. We got to, we got to, um, you know, we can't keep, we can't keep pushing that same narrative, man. You know what I'm saying? We, it's time to teach our youth to, you know, create businesses and to, to to get out of that negative situations and you know what I mean? Just you know, we we, we can't we can't keep going down that same path, man. And, uh, I don't like to I don't mean to be preaching, but I'm just teaching right now. I'm just spitting some game and that's what I do. I put it in the music. I'm not a preacher or a pastor or nothing like that. I don't plan to be. Uh, but I can give you my experiences. I could give you my mentorship, and I can give you the game. And uh, there's a reason behind a lot of that. And I don't want to get too deep into it, but there's a reason why uh, the media has pushed, you know, negative Im images of the hood of that black gangster character um, continuously. Uh, you know, in, in the crack epidemic in the '80s, you know. It seemed like there's a huge uptick in the media portraying us in that way, and uh, there's a lot. There's a lot more than the media, man. It's, it's things that they're doing. You know, I don't want to say too much. I don't want to become a government's target, <laughs> but just read between the lines, and I hope y'all will be able to uh, make a decision for yourself. I'm reaching out to the youth. You know, just there's more to life than that. These rap videos, these shows don't aspire to be that thug gangster that you see and think is cool. You know what I mean? Like, that ain't the route. Go to school, start a business. Uh, I, you know, that's that's the best way. And I'm just speaking from the heart and keeping it real. I don't have no teleprompters when I do these podcasts. You know what I'm saying? I'm not... Obama with the articulates, articulation skills, I'm just Renz, you know what I'm saying, I'll give you the game straight up, uh, but yeah man, I just dropped that song, it was inspired by a lot of them shows in, in my life, and my vision of, of uh, drug dealing in the, in the, the 80s crack epidemic, uh, and how I feel, you know, I gave you two verses on that song, I like the song, I really like the beat, hope y'all like it, go on and uh, Check it out. Go and get it on Spotify. You know what I'm saying? Stream it. Better yet, go buy it on iTunes. You know what I mean? Album. No plans for the album. No title yet, but I'm working on it. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So I hope y'all you know, enjoy it when it come out. Be patient with me as I put it together for y'all. So I have two phones. I should name them. What could we call them? Let's call this one G and let's call this one Q. Hey, what's up, GQ? My name is Damson Idris, AKA the CEO of the DSS, Dark Skin Society. Other thing about that show, it's funny to me, it's like, dude, what's his name? Damson, Damson and Idris, I don't, I can't pronounce his name, he's from England. But he had me fooled, man. Like he had that LA, West Coast, Cali accent down. Perfect, man, cause I used to live with some 
some Cal- some dudes from Inglewood and Compton. Uh, they was on my football team, and uh, you know these roommates. You know, I, you know the lingo sound real similar. You know, there's a little bit of difference between LA and the Bay as far as how they sound. I can tell when you're from LA, and when you're from the Bay, you definitely can tell the difference in the words and the, you know, saying the speech a little bit. But this dude from England, and the one thing that kind of bothers me is like, why, why don't they go and get some authentic real dudes from the turf? You know, what I'm saying to play these roles. You know, you got actors. You know, what I'm saying they just acting. If you want that real deal from the soil spill, you know, that real spit, go and get somebody straight out the turf, man. Like, you know, but they don't do it. You know, it's it's these dudes out here, you know, starving. You know, they really would kill for a part in one of these big shows. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. John Singleton, R.I.P. John Singleton, great director. Uh, but I think on that, on that, I'm not saying dude ain't do, do a good job. He's a good actor. You know, he can talk like badass or Snoop, in, you know, one minute and the next minute, he sound like he some dude from from Scots, you know, from England. I can't even, I don't even know what else to say about it. Like he went to Oxford University, highly educated. I don't know. I don't know how he switches up so quick, but it's like, you could have got some authentic dude straight out the soil. Compton, Inglewood, Watts. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure they auditioned for it. You know, it's kind of in a way, it's culture vulture, man. You, you, you're making money off the culture uh, of the, Folks down there that didn't die and they didn't uh, spill blood, sweat, and tears, you know, in that lifestyle down there. You know what I mean? I got nothing but respect. I had a lot of folks and fam down there, uh, so it's it's all good. I ain't picking and looking for things to complain about. I really like the show and I support it, but that's just one of the things that kind of I'm gonna rub me the wrong way, though. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it is. So the 49ers still had Jimmy G. Like, I mean, it's, we haven't even got to the draft yet, so a lot can happen. Until then, I mean, you see all the moves that have been made. A lot of quarterbacks switching teams: Carson Wentz, Deshaun Watson, uh, Aaron Rodgers staying put, Russell Wilson going to Denver. Uh, and we still stuck with Jimmy G. And like I said. Earlier, you know, game one of the season, I said he's just good enough to be not good enough. 31 other NFL teams knew that, you know. They already know, everybody knows that. Any other quarterback, any other top 10 quarterback, you know, that would have been with us the last three, four years instead of him, you know, I'm thinking we would have came away with at least one Super Bowl, you know, maybe two. He put Russell Wilson on, on that team with that defense, that's two rings, man. Uh, because he does the things that you can't really prepare for. Scramble, uh, you know, extends the play and makes a play. Gets it down the field. And, you know, he can run and make shit happen. You know, Deshaun Watson could do the same thing. Aaron Rodgers. But we were stuck with Jimmy G, you know, stationary quarterback, uh, you know, can't throw down the field, always throwing underneath. Or over the middle and that's easy to prepare for and that's why ain't nobody banging down his door you know to try to sign him and bring him in and, and uh, it is what it is I don't know what they're gonna do he's got a high salary cap number uh, while Trey Lance has a low number uh, when you can build around him you're gonna end up having to probably have to cut Jimmy G you know what I'm saying uh, there's really no other way around it, you know, so we can build this team for the future. Uh, I thought you could we could have at least got uh, a third or fourth rounder for him. There's rumors about us getting a second round pick for Garoppolo, but I don't, you know, it hasn't happened. It's not happening, and there's no, there's no rumors of it ever going to be something that's going to happen uh, in the near future on draft day or anytime soon. Maybe around uh, training camp, there's an injury. Maybe, you know, uh, somebody goes down. 
Kyler Murray, or you know somebody you know, in, the, in the league uh, goes down. They make a deal. They make a move. They panic. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it could happen, but that's just you just bet. You can't bet on something like that. That's just like uh, making a wish and hoping that it happens. And, and, uh, nah, that ain't a way to build your franchise. That ain't a way to build your team. So right now we stuck with him. Uh, so if we did keep him, you know he's not gonna be able to throw until sometime in the summer because of his surgery. Uh, so definitely, naturally, automatically, Lance should already be the starter. Uh, there's no way that he's not the starter. No way. Uh, he needs the reps. He needs the experience. Uh, I think he should have started this past year. But what's going to happen is, you know, if he's on the team, he's just going to have to be a mentor, a backup, and uh, we hold on to him until we find the right offer. And that could be up until the trade deadline. So fans, sit back, be patient. We've got a good squad still. I like what they did. Brought back Kerry Hyder Jr. Uh, they brought in a safety from the AFC team, the Colts, I, I believe. Uh, they made a few moves. Uh, they, they did lose most of it. Uh, that's not good. That's not good at all. But we got Ray Ray McLeod. Got some speed. You know, wide receiver and wide returner. So we got some. We got some good things. Draft hasn't happened yet. Uh, D Ford. I haven't said his name in a while, but he should be coming back. That's going to help. So the, the D line should still be solid. Along with Javon Kinlaw, you know, he got hurt. He was the number one pick. Haven't really seen it from him yet. You know, you know he's got size and ability, but I think, uh, you know, our defense is still going to be solid. Oh, the corner that we got, Charverius Moore. You know, he was a real deal from Kansas City. Uh, you know, so that's an upgrade. We upgraded in the spot where we where we really needed to, and that was corner. Uh, so the 49ers, I mean, some good, some bad. Uh, I think can't really make an evaluation or prediction to well after the draft and into, honestly, into well into the preseason, you know, like into the first couple games of the year to see what we really have. But I think we should be improved with Lance at the quarterback, with the moves they made on defense, uh, the experience that we have with the, this offense, you know, the, the top three playmakers, uh, Samuel, Kittle, and, uh, you know, Elijah Mitchell coming back. You know, second year, he should have a bigger year. The line is good. You know, it, you know we, we got a good, solid running game. We did lose uh, Tomlinson. But guards... I'm not saying they're a dime a dozen, but you can find them in the later round. So I, I, I got faith that Lynch can make it happen uh, in free agency and in the draft to where we'll be. If not better, we'll be at least comparable and you know on the same level as we were last year, which would be good enough with a new quarterback. Once he gets his experience and gets some wins and gets some confidence under his belt, he could be the one to make that extra play to extend the play to go downfield and and, uh, and win us the game with that arm that he has. So things are looking up for San Francisco. So I don't know if y'all watching this with me. I'm watching it right now. This video is gonna come out uh, a little bit later, so we'll know the results. But I'm already knowing the Warriors. They about to lose again, and you know they've been real inconsistent. But the last 11 games, you know, it's like a mediocre team. You know what I mean, like, uh, they started out 18 and 2. 18 and 2, and now, you know what I'm saying? Like, how, how in the hell? Like, during that time, I was for real thinking that it was going to be like that 73 and 19 because they was doing all that without Clay. Uh, and I was thinking Wiseman was going to come back. And people say, well, we don't know what he is. Or what. I mean, the dude averaged tw like 12 and 6 his rookie year. You know what I'm saying? with just coming out there with just pure raw talent so you knew coming into this year if he's gonna play he's gonna improve on that 
like you know last week we seen him in the G League he was getting like 18 and 18 and 9 rebounds and stuff something like that he was, he was doing it doing his thing I know it was the G League but he, he looked a little bit bigger and a little bit better as a player overall uh, but now it turns out that he's out for the year with the MCL swelling uh, it swole up like I had the same injury when it swells up you're supposed to ice it I mean, put ice on it and then it'll be down the next day. You'll be ready to go. I don't I don't know why they shut him down for the season. Shit. I'll be real with y'all. I tweaked my MC. I didn't speak on it earlier in the season. And it's been like three and a half months I was back playing. You know what I'm saying? On the court. Getting buckets. Setting screens. Knocking people down, doing my thing. You know what I mean? I'm just, I'm just saying, like, I'm not trying to... I don't know the severity of a, you know, of his MCL injury, but it just seemed like the NBA players just be milking injuries, man. Like they, they really um, take the time and, and and they'll just go out and sit out for a long ass time for something that really ain't that serious, man. Like, like you know, and it just seemed like the Warriors they have a few people doing that. You know, uh, I respect highly respect Iguodala, Draymond, and, and all of them. You know, they didn't did they thing, but. I don't know if the, uh, the time has come for it, you know, their time has passed. And, and uh, you know, it's just crazy to think you're just going to coast into the playoffs and activate yourself and just your legs will be totally activated and ready to roll. And y'all can flip the light switch and just go on the run. I hope they do, man, because I'll be happy. That's the team I grew up loving. You know, I still do. I'm watching the game right now. They're about to lose to the Wizards. You got to be kidding me, man. Oh, man. Yeah, it's over. But... It just, I don't know, man. I, I just don't, it just didn't seem like, I don't know if it was Steve Kerr being too lenient, not putting in the, you know, giving him a sense of urgency, uh, not making that move at the deadline to get a big man yeah, that's going to come back to bite him. Uh, Steph getting injured at the wrong times, like a fluke injury. Uh, dude from the Celtics, I think Marcus Smart just looked like he just, you know what I'm saying? Chop block them. Like, that's what we used to call a chop block. You go running at the DB or the linebacker's knees. You know, you're doing it on purpose. It's a cut block. It looked like that's what he did. And that shit is it's dirty. There's no way, no reason for a loose ball. You really want to die for it. They was already up in that game. It wasn't like it was game seven in the NBA Finals. So it looked like, you know, it was a dirty play. So, bam, you know, step out. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, it's not looking good. Is he going to come back first game of the playoffs or whatever? But, you know, you ain't been playing for two, three weeks. Shit, one week, you know, like not playing, you feel a little bit winded when you come back. So, I don't know. I'm just speaking on what I'm seeing. And I'm, you know, I don't think they're going to win the chip now. I think it's, it's highly likely they might be one and done. And right now, you look at the standings, shit, they are in third place and in danger of dropping to fourth, even fifth. They, you know, they got the Utah Jazz only three games back, Mavericks only three games back, and the Nuggets four and a half games back. Uh, we 48 and 26. You know, we got a handful of games left, at least 10. We got to get, get to 82 games. Uh... So it's not looking good. I did like what they did against Miami the other night. That was the best team in the East. They showed they got the firepower. They might have to rely strictly on, you know, the youngsters right now. You know, Clay has shown he can do it, but it's harder on him when he's when he's without step, because then they can key on. Uh, Kaminga looked like a young Dominique Wilkins to me. You know? Sky's linen with that dude, but. He's going to have off nights since he's a rookie. He's only 19. I just imagine him, you know, when he's like 24, 25. So he's going to be the truth. He is the truth. Let's just say it right now. Uh, but it's coming back to bite him with, with Wiseman. You know, I was telling y'all, I was asking, where is he? Why is it taking so long? You know, uh, you know, same injury I had. Matter of fact, I've done it twice. And the first time was in football. 
And I was, I tried to go back in the game with that injury. Mm-hmm. I was ready to go back in. In the fourth quarter, I got hurt in the second quarter. And in the fourth quarter, I was ready to rope, go back in. And then I actually didn't even get it looked at until spring ball in the spring because that game was in November. It was like one of the like, last game of the year at St. Mary. And I, you know, went through all kind of January, February, early morning conditioning, all that with that same MCL injury. Made it all the way to training camp in August. And then they sent me some results back from a x-ray I had in the spring telling me it was torn. But I had run a 40 and run a 4-5 on grass with the bad knee. So I don't know, man. Like, why? Wiseman look fine in the G League. Why he why he can't just, just play his swells up? So what? Ice it, man. That's what happens. Shit. You ice it, ice it down, you'll be you'll be straight, you'll be good to go, you'll be alright. But he shut him down for the year and you know we ain't got no big man. So it is what it is. I hope that he his career pans out. He looked like a young David Robinson, man. You know, he got the tools, he got the size, crazy speed when he's running the floor. Uh, you know, he can I seen him do some good things in the post. He can shoot a three, he can shoot a mid range he can do pretty much everything. But you know, that's the piece we're missing right now. So I don't think we're going to win, dog. Like, straight up, man. That's what it is. All right. Let's let's catch up with the East Bay Kings, ABA basketball team. That's my squad. Uh, our season just came to an end. Uh, disappointing end, but, you know, it's uh, progress has been made. We're building this organization. Uh, you know, it's a lot, a lot of things that we need to, to fix, you know, we can improve on, but overall, you know, the job of creating a platform, creating a franchise, giving people a job, opportunity to, to play professionally, uh, and a chance to continue their career and possibly move on, move up to the next level, you know, that job is, is done. Now it's time to become a better team and, and get wins and, you know, go far into the playoffs. And we lost. We fell to Silicon Valley Panthers. Shout out to the Silicon Valley Panthers. Actually, oh, they changed the name. San Jose Panthers. Yeah. Um, I like that better anyway. San Jose Panthers sound, sound better. Uh, big shout out to the squad over there in the South Bay. Um, they're moving on. And, uh, you know, see what they can do see if they can make it happen um but as far as the squad we got you know we, we back in grind mode uh i actually just came back season ended for us about a week ago i was on vacation i had to get my mind right and had to sp spend some quality time uh with the fam you know, we went to this water park uh it's, it's cool we will stay over at the uh which i'm calling it's called uh Great Wolf Lodge, yeah, it's a dope water park, amusement park in Manteca, California. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So, I, you know, I had to, had to uh, let my hair down and relax for a minute. But uh, this week we back at it. Uh, and we just going to work on the fundamentals and work on the things. I got to work on things as an owner to, uh, you know, set us up for success next year. Next season isn't until October, late October, 2022. Uh, but a lot of things got to be put in place. And, uh, and not to mention our off season is filled with a lot of things like what we got coming up with the three on three tournament. Uh, we hoop it up, owned by Kevin Garnett, Big Ticket Sports. Uh, it's a real big connection that we make. Uh, and I'm gonna continue to uh, Put things in motion for my squad or for my players uh, to help them get to the next level and get more exposure and that's what I'm gonna do you know, we building this brand we got the clothing line you know the everything's available online at eastbaykings.com and uh, you know training sessions too for any upcoming not just basketball players but you know we help with football too because you know that's my first love my first sport um, so we put we putting together some activities, some training sessions for both football and basketball. 
uh, you know, for players that's trying to get to the next level or just trying to work on their skills and improve their game overall. So go ahead, go to eastbackkings.com and you can check it out and uh, sign up for a training session. We got one coming up in June for the for the kids, a youth camp, uh, Saturday, June 25th. Mm, and uh, just stay tuned, stay tap, stay tuned in, stay tapped into the website, the news. Uh, you know, I'll continue to come on with the podcast from time to time, and, and uh, if any breaking news comes through, you know, just keep checking the website and keep checking in with the with the podcast. Uh, but shout out to uh, the boy Andrew Wayne. 38 points uh, in our last game. He did his thing. He's really making moves. Uh, you know, we got some guys that can go. I think Deshaun McNeil got a chance, you know, to, to, to go to the next level. Uh, boy, Mike Ladd really showed a lot of improvement. Um, really good numbers as a shooting guard. Uh, final stats will be coming soon on the IG. So be patient with that. Um, P.J. Gardner was also a real good, real good um, all-around player, you know, as far as, you know, he can do it all. He's got some real good film on tape. You know, if he if he decided he wanted to continue to keep to move up and keep playing. But ABA, for me, uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, I haven't decided if I'm going to, you know, what I'm going to do as far as am I going to keep playing. Uh... I mean, I enjoy playing, but I'm not sure yet. Um, I'm totally, I mean, retirement, <laughs> I'm just getting started. But, we, uh, you know, it's at some point there's going to come a time where, you know, I'm just going to sit back and be in the owner's chair and you know, move forward in that capacity because I'm, you know, really not by choice, you know, but I wore three hats as an owner, coach, and player this year. And that, I can't do that forever. At some point, you know, we're gonna have to hire a full-time coach uh, to handle everything that I've been handling. It's, it's a lot. To, it's a lot to deal with, especially when you're trying to rehab and get back on the court. You know, uh, it's just it's a lot on my plate. But at the end of the day, you know, I trust myself. You know, some people would have folded and cracked under pressure and just cut the team and cancel the season or you know just went AWOL and been can't even get in contact with them or you know with all the I mean there's a lot of a lot of stuff a lot of people that I'm responsible for their opportunities my family uh, you know what I'm saying and make sure they can survive and have food on the table or we doing well but I'm just saying like it's a lot it's a lot on the, on, the, on somebody's plate to handle when you uh, trying to play, uh, you know, and, and, and do the day to day of running the business, and, and uh, I'm still an artist, I'm still creating, and being creative, and still doing that. So it's, it's a lot, but you know, I never um, put anything uh, past me as far as like something being too difficult or too much of a challenge. I love the challenge. I'm here for the challenge. That's what I'm here for. You know, I got, I'm ambitious, and uh, I think I can do it all sometimes. And, and, you know, sometimes that could be a weakness, but sometimes it could be a strength, I can tell you. So, you know, I, I put the weight of the world on my shoulders. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, and I'm going to keep pushing and keep grinding and keep riding for, for my squad, East Bay Kings, whatever it is that, that I can do to, to uh, to make things better and to, uh, to you know, create more opportunities and to uh, make us successful, I'm going to do. So, yeah, you know, stay tuned in, tapped in, 510radio.com, EastBayKingsPodcast. Check us out next time. It's your boy Renz Jr. signing out.